October 26. The Holy Grey Martyr Demetrius this glorious and wonder-working saint was born in Thessalonica of noble and devout parents. Implored of God by childless parents, Demetrius was their only son, and so was raised and educated with great care. Demetrius' father was a commander in Thessalonica. When his father died, Emperor Maximian appointed Demetrius as commander in his place. As he appointed him, Maximian, an opponent of Christ, particularly recommended that he persecute and exterminate the Christians in Thessalonica. Demetrius not only disobeyed the emperor, but only confessed and preached the Lord Jesus Christ in the city of Thessalonica. When the emperor heard of this, he became furious with Demetrius. Then, when he was returning from battle against the Sarmatians, Maximian stopped at Thessalonica to investigate the matter. The emperor summoned Demetrius and questioned him about his faith. Demetrius openly acknowledged his Christian faith to the emperor and also denounced the emperor's idolatry. Maximian cast Demetrius in, into prison. Knowing what was awaiting him, Demetrius gave all his goods to his faithful servant Lupus to distribute to the poor and joyfully awaited his imminent suffering for Christ the Lord. An angel of God appeared to him in prison, saying, Peace be to you, O sufferer of Christ, be brave and be strong. After several days the emperor sent soldiers to the prison to kill Demetrius. The soldiers found the saint of God at prayer and ran him through with lances. Christians secretly took his body and honorably buried it, healing mere flowed from the body of martyr of Christ, curing many of the sick. Soon a small church was built over his relics. An Illyrian nobleman, Leontius, was afflicted with an incurable illness. He hastened with prayer to the relics of St. Demetrius and was completely healed. In thanksgiving, Leontius erected a much larger church on the site of the old church. The saint appeared to him on two occasions. When Emperor Justinian wanted to translate the relics of the saint from Thessalonica to Constantinople, flaming sparks sprang from the tomb and a voice was heard, Stop and do not touch! And thus the relics of Saint Demetrius have remained for all time in Thessalonica. As the protector of Thessalonica, Saint Demetrius had appeared many times and on many occasions has saved Thessalonica from great calamity. His miracles are without number. The Russians consider St. Demetrius to be the protector of Siberia, which was conquered and annexed to Russia in October 26, 1581 AD. The Venerable Martyr Yoasaf Yoasaf was a disciple of Saint Nephon, Patriarch of Constantinople, and labored in asceticism on the holy mountain. He had so great a love for Christ that all of his ascetic works seemed inadequate, and from love he desired to suffer for his Lord. For that reason he went to Constantinople, where he openly confessed to the Turks his faith in the Holy Trinity and the Son of God. The enraged Turks beheaded him on October 26, 1536 A.D. The Commemoration of the Great Earthquake of Constantinople In the year 740 A.D., during the reign of Emperor Leo the Isaurian, there was a terrifying and prolonged earthquake in Constantinople. The people considered this a punishment from God for their sins and prayed with great repentance to the Most Holy Theotokos and Saint Demetrius, until God showed mercy and the earthquake ceased. Reflection 
A miracle of Saint Demetrius of Thessalonica. Demetrius was the commander of Thessalonica during his life and remained so after his repose. People have felt his presence in Thessalonica, especially in times of great calamities. He protects the city, wards of misfortunes, repels invaders, and helps all who invoke his name. Here is a wonderful example of his unusual aid to people in need. Once the barbarians attacked Thessalonica and were unable to overtake it. Infuriated at this, they pillaged the countryside and bound and carried off two beautiful maidens whom they gave as a gift to their prince. These maidens knew how to embroider well. When the prince saw their handiwork, he said to them, I hear that there is a great god in your land, Demetrius, and that he works great miracles. Embroider his face on this linen. The maidens told him that Saint Demetrius was not a god, but rather God's servant and the helper of Christians. At first, they refused to embroider the face of the saint, but when the prince threatened them with death, they carried out the command and completed the task by Saint Demetrius's day. On the eve of the feast, they looked at their embroidery and wept sorrowfully as they had to spend the feast day in slavery and had to give that embroidered image of their beloved saint to an impious barbarian. Both maidens prayed to Saint Demetrius to forgive them. Then Saint Demetrius appeared to them and took them both away, as an angel had once taken the prophet Habakkuk. He brought them to Thessalonica and set them in his church, a solemn all-night vigil was being celebrated and many people were there. When they learned of the miraculous rescue of these Christian maidens, all glorify God and Saint Demetrius, his great servant and commander. Contemplation Contemplate the miraculous deliverance of Peter from prison. Acts 12 How Peter was sleeping in the prison bound with two chains how the faithful prayed to God for Peter, how a radiant angel appeared in a prison, freed the shackled Peter and led him out. Homily On the heart ready for God My heart is ready, O God, my heart is ready. Psalm 57, 7 Brethren, blessed is he who is able to speak like this to his Lord. Blessed is he whose heart is completely ready to follow the will of God. The readiness of the heart of man lies in this, to joyfully follow the will of God and not be confused by one's own thoughts and desires. At first, the repentant King David had followed his own sinful thoughts and desires and was like a boat on a stormy sea. However, when he realized that the storm was going to drown him, he turned to God with great repentance and tears and turned the boat of his life entirely over to God. My heart is ready, O God, my heart is ready, he cried out with great peace of soul, for he knew that he had given his boat into the hands of most skilled helmsmen. The storm still raged and the winds and waves still assaulted him, but he was not afraid, convinced that nothing could smash his boat and that his boat would sail safely to a calm harbor. A ready heart means a heart cleansed of pride and humble before the majestic power and wisdom of God. A ready heart means a heart emptied of all worldly desires and illusions and filled with nothing but aspirations towards God and love for God. A ready heart means a heart that is healed of all restlessness, cares and fears, and is quieted and encouraged by the presence of God's grace. I will sing and give praise in my glory, Psalm 57, 7, continues the psalmist. This shows that his heart is truly ready, he is not proud of his royal glory, but ascribes it to God. He humbled himself before God as nothing, and now 
His sole pleasure is to magnify and glorify God. His personal glory only gives him a reason for glorifying his all-glorious God. O oh, my brethren, let us endeavor that our hearts be ready soon before God, ready to hear the word of God, ready to follow the will of God, ready to glorify the living God. O oh Lord God, our immortal Creator, help us to ready our hearts that they may be vessels of Thy life-giving grace. To Thee be glory and praise forever. Amen.